Denmark and Sweden's commitment to free speech is wilting in the face of Quran burnings. Muslims coming from Friday prayer watched the Quran being burnt on the opposite street from the mosque on July 28, 2023 in Copenhagen, Denmark. Six Quran burnings were planned to be held in Copenhagen this Friday, with this one being held directly across from a mosque where Friday prayer was in progress. Danish diplomats were today called to meetings in Egypt and Saudi Arabia to receive the local government's dissatisfaction with these actions. And on Monday, foreign ministers from 57 countries will meet to discuss the Quran burnings, uh, burning in Sweden and Denmark and what action should be taken. What action? This is the way it's done in the West. We have we have rights here. We have rights here. If someone wants to burn the Quran, they can burn the Quran. If someone wants to burn the Bible, they can burn the Bible. And everything in the basically and one of those is going to result in not as much violence. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, and if you don't like it, you can go back to Muslim countries. Or you don't want to go back. Why? Because they're awful countries? Why? What what made them awful? Was it was it all the blasphemy laws and all the it was all the Sharia law stuff? Is that what made them that what made them bad? It was, wasn't it? It was. In 2005, a Danish newspaper published a number of cartoons depicting the Prophet Muhammad, which led to a global battle of values over the relationship between freedom of expression and religion. Uh, despite multiple terrorist attacks, one of them deadly, I believe one of the cartoonists was actually murdered in the middle of the street, uh, others thwarted and concerted diplomatic pressure from the 57 uh, Muslim-majority members of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, led by countries like Pakistan, Egypt, Saudi Arabia and Iran, the Danish government held firm and refused demands to impose Islamic blasphemy norms because these are not Islamic countries, at least not yet. Uh, but, I mean, you left your old countries because you felt they were shit. And let's just be very honest with each other, it was all the Sharia stuff that made them shit. And then you've came here and you want to establish the exact same stuff that made your old country shit. Do you not see the problem? Nobody's stopping you from being Muslim. Nobody. Nobody's stopping you. If anything, the government are more likely to defend you than they are Christians, right? So, you know, you've got it. You've got it. Everything's fine. The rest of us would just like to keep our human rights, you know. Uh, however, recent events have shattered this resolve. Following months of public Quran burnings in Denmark and Sweden, as well as renewed and increased pressure from the OIC and attacks on the Swedish embassy in Iraq and a Danish non-governmental organization in Basra last month, Scandinavian democracies are retreating from their liberal principles. On July 30th, Danish Foreign Minister Lars Loki Rasmussen announced that the government will seek to enact legislation for special situations where other countries, cultures and religions could be insulted potentially resulting in significant negative consequences for Denmark. Blasphemy laws. There you are. You brought in bra blasphemy laws. That's that's what's happening. Okay, so you're no longer like a free democratic nation. You have blasphemy laws, right? You're, you're a secular state now where the state steps in uh, to defend religion for, from people exercising their human rights. There you are. Middle East one. Uh... Sweden is mulling over similar actions. Uh, these capitulations have forced these countries to debate how far they are willing to go to defend their freedoms in the face of violence and international backlash. Uh, I think, uh, basically, if you are enacting your freedom and you're not actually causing any physical harm to pr people or property and people want to attack you for it, fight fire with fire. Uh, like, I'm just saying, we've all got a right to defend ourselves. Especially when we're just enacting our human rights and people wish to infringe upon them. If they meet us with violence, I'm not saying go out and be violent. I'm saying wait until they throw the first punch. Uh, on the one hand, uh, there are good reasons to be critical of book burnings. You can be critical of them all you want, just you can't ban them because that's people's human rights. Uh, it is a poor substitute for reasoned debate. I would completely agree with that, and one that will forever be associated with totalitarian states such as Nazi Germany in our collective history. But however noxious the ideas of the far right protesters who torch Qurans, they weren't. Uh, they're all far right. They weren't. There was actually a few ex-Muslims in amongst them as well. But I've got a feeling you're not going to mention those guys, are you? Uh, they are not state agents. They are not speaking for the government, nor do they have the power to censor or discriminate. They are private individuals whose non-violent symbolic expressions are intended to convey a message which, however offensive to those who disprove, is part and parcel of free expression. Yep, I would say that's correct and 
That's where the argument ends, however, not for time. The violence that accompanies this event stems both from terrorist groups as well as from counter-protesters who insist that religious taboos can only be enforced through mob intimidation and violence, but they are mistaken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's basically the re a lot of secular nations do use violence to enforce their religion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, let me let me go back to 2007 Reddit and tip my tip my fedora, my lady. Uh, in July, an Iranian citizen burned the Danish and Swedish flags as well as the Bible and Torah in front of the Israeli embassy in Copenhagen, praising Ayatollah Khomeini in the process. They notice that this man was not met with violence. Was an entire part of the world just raised better? <laughs> Or something. He wasn't meant to be violence, you know. That's I would say it's a distasteful thing to do, but that's completely his right to do that. I would say that burning the Quran is also a distasteful thing to do, but people are completely within the right to do it. There you are. Problem solved. It's over. Oh, but what about the terrorist groups? Who are the terrorist groups? What do they believe in again? What side? What side are they on? I think that might be the side that's the problem. Uh, but few Danes cared about this deliberate attempt to provoke. No one threatened to use violence. Yeah, funny that, eh? And the protester was not arrested. Rather than demonstrating Danish hypocrisy, the protester managed to show how a secular society committed to both free speech and tolerance can handle offensive ideas and also how these values serve as the antithesis to violence. I get secular and non-secular mixed up all the time. I think I might have done it earlier in the video. For that, I apologise. Uh, despite these and other demonstrable merits of free speech, the recent steps taken by Denmark and Sweden reveal a concerning trend. Bowing to intimidation from politically authoritarian and religiously oppressive states sets a perilous precedent and gives oppressive regimes potential leverage to further undermine democratic principles, because that's one thing the state do. Whenever they get their foot in the door of taking your freedom away, they will fucking smash the whole door open. As soon as you let them get the foot and that's it. The, the rest of the rights will go right after that. Because states, by their very nature, are, are uh, operations of control. Their job is to control everything. If something is not controlled, eventually it will be. That is the inherent nature of states. States never get less powerful over time. They don't. They don't. The only time they lose their power is when a bigger state comes in and fucks them up. Or... They have a nice little boogaloo that sorts out the problem. Uh, to sweeten this bitter pill, the Danish government has been less than factual in its messaging. Danish Prime Minister uh, Mette Frederiksen said that burning sacred books does not constitute an expression, despite established case law to the contrary. Yeah, it is freedom of expression. It is. And I, I, I have not the tiniest bit of shock whatsoever that the leader of a supposed free, democratic, liberal country doesn't comprehend how human rights work. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the tiniest bit shocked about that. Uh, the government has also said that Denmark and Sweden are global outliers when it comes to, the permit, to permitting the desecration of sacred books, even though both Norway and Netherlands protect such symbolic expression. There are already also strong reasons to believe that the OIC will not be appeased by the proposed Danish legal restrictions, however rationalised, because they are the type of people that can never be pleased. Basically... Until you basically convert every single person in the country uh, to Islam, uh, OIC will not be pleased. Because he's, he's know the goal of religions, right? Like literally every religion, you know the goal. To have every single person in the world believing that religion. That's what religion is. That's like the purpose. That's what they do, right? That's the point. So basically, you're going to go, maybe they'll see... No, they won't. They won't see reason. <laughs> like... Their job is to make you, by force, believe. Christians, not so much. At one point, Christians, definitely, right? But nowadays, not so much. In fact, pretty much not at all. There's still a small subset, but that's a very tiny minority. Uh, Islam, on the other hand, you know, it's a completely different kettle of fish. <laughs> Uh, the next day after the Danish government's promise to explore legal remedies against Quran burnings, the OIC released a strongly worded statement admonishing Denmark and Sweden for failing to immediately criminalise them and pledging to continue to pursue the matter. Now, I love how they're shocked. It's like, what do you mean you can't just pass a law at the drop of a hat? Why can't you just pass a law and immediately at the drop of a hat? What's parliament? What's parliamentary votes? What's constitution? And all that, right? Isn't it weird how that's the approach of Muslim countries? What do you mean? They, they can't comprehend not just being Im immediately able to pass a law because they are deeply authoritarian because 
they are Muslim countries. <laughs> right? That's just the way it works there. And that is why a lot of these people actually left those countries because they couldn't handle the authoritarianism. So they come over here and end up becoming the turkeys that vote for they, they, they become the turkeys that escaped Christmas just to <laughs> just to come to another country and go, do you know what we should have? Christmas. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Uh, the Turkish ambassador to Denmark also warned that the proposed Danish efforts were insufficient. In other words, once democracies yield from principle, authoritarian states will not respond with gratitude and conciliatory attitudes, but demand that these self-imposed restrictions, restrictions on free speech be expanded more broadly. And that's not just other authoritarian nations, that's the own government as well, the state. That's ultimately what they want. That is ultimately what they want. Yeah, we want absolute control over absolutely everything. Oh, sorry, guys. We were pressured by Saudi Arabia. Okay, why? Here's a plan. Say, Saudi Arabia, fuck off. Mind your own country. This is the West. We do things differently here. You can do whatever the hell you want with your own nation, but this is our nation, so suck this fat cock. Suck suck this fat cock. That's, that's what you can do. You're not in charge. We're in charge of our own country. Why not do that? Why not do that? Oh, we'll bomb your embassy. Why do we have one there in the first place? Who fucking cares? Pull them out. Who wants to talk to them? Stupid. Uh, in other words, once democracy... Oh, I've already just read that. <clears throat> Uh, this is not only true in Scandinavia, but also in the global stage. Earlier this month, the OIC managed to secure a crucial win at the UN's Human Rights Council with a resolution that calls on member states to, among other things, address, prevent and prosecute acts and advocacy of religious hatred as a direct response to the Scandinavian Quran burnings. The OIC argues that defamation of religious ideas and symbols constitutes incitement to religious hatred, a category of speech prohibited under international human rights law and in most European democracies. This would not just legitimise but also give legal teeth to the suppression of religious dissent and would remove the stigma from countries where blasphemy and apostasy is severely punished. Uh, yeah, but also by trampling on everyone's human rights as well. I love how I love how like no government ever goes, oh well that's human rights, we literally we can't touch that. We can't touch that. No, that's human rights. Instead they go yeah, it's human rights, but let's find a way to like work around, you know, let's get the lawyers in and I'm like, I get, like, whenever a government does that, that should make everyone go like, wait a minute, what the fuck, you're going after human rights? Like, that should make people freak out. You know, that should make them fucking start warming up the lampposts, but no, we are, we are far, far too docile. Uh, this marks a radical departure from back in 2011 when the Obama administration rallied democracies around the world and spearheaded a pivotal, blah, a pivotal Human Rights Council resolution to halt the OIC's long-standing efforts to internationalise blasphemy laws. The 2011 resolution advocated education and counter-speech against religious intolerance, asserting the protection of people, not ideologies, under human rights law. It called for the penalisation of incitement to imminent violence based on religion or belief, under Lining that free speech restrictions should shield individuals from tangible harm, not defend abstract religious ideas from criticism or mockery, however offensive, which is very true. Uh, as then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said, the resolution was a step to overcome the false divide that pits religious sensitivities against freedom of expression. I'm not about to listen to Hillary Clinton on human rights. Uh, while this shut up and go away, while this broader international perspective is critical, it is also important to consider the domestic implications of the laws Denmark and Sweden have on the table. The Danish government's proposed legal remedy against uh, insulting other countries doesn't only threaten to restrict criticism of Islam, in fact, Danish Muslims prote protesting US or Israeli foreign policy or the mass internment of Uyghur Muslims in China could end up on the wrong side of the law. If they protect... Uh, blah... If they protest in ways deemed insulting to the US, Israel or China and detrimental to the broad and nebulous concept of Danish interests. Moreover, the Danish and Swedish government's misguided attempt to foster tolerance through censorship could inadvertently exacerbate social divisions within their own borders. Hard-nosed critics of Islam and Muslim immigration frequently argue that Islam is incompatible with democracy and freedom, painting Muslims as a fifth column. I mean, it literally is. Those are the tenets and the basic fundamentals of Islam. Absolute authoritarian control and absolute subservience to Allah. That's it. It literally is incompatible. Like, I mean, even when in, Af when in Afghanistan where we tried to make democracy, yeah, how did that work out? Iraq, how did that work out? Libya, how did that work out? Right? None of them fucking worked out. All of the Muslim countries, none of them are democratic. 
right? Or America tried and fucking failed really badly, right? Because that isn't how Islam works. So when Islam comes over to Europe, that's just what happens because that's what Islam is. Uh, the external pressure from Islamic states, coupled with support for restrictive measures uh, among some Danish Muslims, risk emboldening these divisive narratives. This stands to harm the many Scandinavian Muslims who appreciate the freedoms and equality that Denmark and Sweden offer. I mean, if you want the true freedom, then drop the religion. <laughs> but uh, And which sets these countries apart from the Muslim-majority states of the OIC. Free speech is a difficult principle to uphold consistently. No, it's not. You're stupid. Uh, government, uh, governments and, uh, and citizens of democracies alike are frequently tempted to sacrifice this principle when faced with threats or adverse consequences of unpopular or extremist speech, but one only has to compare the vibrant democracies of Denmark and Sweden to the authoritarian regimes of Iran and Saudi Arabia to realise that for all of its flaws, free speech makes the world more tolerant, democratic, equal and free. Denmark and Sweden's deflect defection from this core liberal principle is a dark day in the global fight for freedom of speech. Tell them to fuck off. Tell them... This is the way we run things here. You're Saudi Arabia, you're Pakistan, fucking do whatever you want with your own countries, but this isn't how we do things here, right? We have these things called human rights here, even though the governments are trying to get rid of all of those as well, right? It's a case of not your country, not your rules. Suck a dick. <laughs>